Okay, let's do some math for fun. Here, this question is actually from Taiwan, and that's where I'm from. And this right here is actually one of the questions on the college entrance exam for high school students. And here is the question. We are going to multiply these two matrices, and notice that we have A, B, C, D, and also E. <laughs> this E is not 2.718 or that. It's just uh, uh, known. And then we have the X, Y, Z. And our goal is to find out what Y is. This question is a lot of fun because it's like playing Sudoku, right? So you'll see. And um, yeah, I told you guys I haven't done linear algebra for so long, but I still remember how to play matrices. But anyway, you guys should pause the video and try to figure out what Y is. Okay, here is the answer. Let me tell you guys that Y is equal to 7 over 2, right? And of course, I'll show you guys how to do this. First of all, this is how you can set up when you multiply matrices. First of all, remember order matters. And second, the dimensions of the matrices matters. But this is the 3 by 2, this is the 2 by 3. You end up with a 3 by 3. For more, uh, linear, for more linear algebra videos, be sure you go check out Dr. Pine's videos. All right, let's see. I will put this down right here. We have A, B, C, D, 1, 2. And you guys know the hardest part of doing linear algebra is that you have to make sure you copy down all the numbers correctly and also the computations. All right, now for this one, I will put it on the top right here and just write it down negative 3, 5, 7, and then negative 4, 6, and E. And then I will put the answer right here. You'll see it's actually really nice. When you have a 3 by 2 times a 2 by 3, you do end up with a 3 by 3. And let me just copy this down first. We have 3x7, and then we have 0y7, and then negative 11, z, and 23. Well, what does this do? Let me tell you. It's so much easier to know what and what I'm multiplying to get the answer. For example, negative 11. This is from 1 times negative 3. Let me just put this down right here for you guys plus this times that, that's it. See, this times that plus this times that, you end up with negative 11. So that's it, that's the deal. Okay, now, of course, we're going to focus on answering the question, and this is where the y is. So we want the y, and based on this setup, you know that 5 times c plus 6 times d will give us y. Yeah, we don't know C and D, so we have to find it. Yeah. Huh, how can I find C and D though? Well, I'm on this row. Why don't I look at this row and have the zero right here? I'm going to use that. We know this times this plus this times that will give us zero. So that's what we know. And that's what we want. So let me just put this down here. This is what we know. I will put down this right here for you guys. Negative 3 times C plus negative 4 times d give us 0 like this. And then we still need more equations. Let's see. Wait, why don't I use this 7? This 7 is from this times this plus this times that. So let me write it down. 7 times c plus yeah, e. Oh my god. The, whoever created this question, like I think I don't know what's wrong with the e that he wants to use, but anyway, e times d, e times d, this will give us this 7 here. So we have the system of equations, but I don't know what e is. It's okay, let's not give up. In fact, e is right here, and then, oh, look, we have 1 and 2. And if you guys really want, you guys can also try to solve for a and b, but I don't know, I just want to solve for e. I will just write this down right here, because we know that. So I'll put this down. We know 7 times 1, so let me just put this down. 7 times 1, or 1 times 7, doesn't matter that much. And then e times 2, so it's not just actually just keep everything in the same order. 1 times 7, plus 2 times e. Finally, man, I have an equation that's equal to 23. This equation is just one variable, that's good. So for e, really nice, minus 7 on both sides, you get 2e is equal to 16, so e is equal to 8. Yes, I'm telling you guys E is equal to 8 for the first time. <laughs> well, well, let's see what do we end up with. From this equation, let's take a look. Right here we have 7C 
plus the e right here, as we said, is 8. And then, of course, we have the d. This is equal to 7. On the top, well, I can just multiply everything by 2, so I can do the elimination. So let's do that real quick. Multiply this by 2. And we will end up with negative 6c minus 8. d equals 0. Ah, so much better now. Well, this and that cancel, and then we end up with, well, all this is just C, and so when you combine, of course, you get 7. And uh, I'll plug in 7 into this original, so I know negative, se negative 3, negative 3 times this 7 into the C, and then minus 4 times D equals 0. And of course, this is negative 21. You put it on the other side, it becomes positive 21, and divide both sides by negative 4. You get d is equal to negative 21 over 4. Whew. Now I can plug in everything right here and then solve for y. So we have 5. C is this guy, negative 20. Well, c is 7. See, this is the hardest part when you're doing linear algebra. You have to remember what is 1 and all that. And it says thanks to Sudoku, I told you. Anyway, plus 6. D is this guy, which is negative 21 over 4. And no, you cannot use a calculator. You have to do everything by hand, okay? So let's go ahead and do it. This right here is 35. And of course, cancel the fractions. You get this right here. Multiply, you get plus. This right here is negative 63 over 2. This is the saying 70 over 2 minus 63. So only all you get 7 over 2. Done. Whew. Wow, this is, was a lot of fun. And in fact, I haven't tried this, but seriously, I don't know if you guys can also solve for A, B, and also X and Z, because those were the letters that we haven't found earlier. But anyway, this is it. Hopefully, you guys all like this video. And shout out to the, the viewer, whoever. Um, let me see. Shout out to Joseph Wu, because like, he's the one who you know, introduced this uh, file to me. So yeah, anyway. This is it.